this job we're actually going to be replacing the power steering cooler line. That line is one that I had found when I was doing some other work on the car. line was leaking over on the passenger side at the quick disconnect. So the only repair for that is simply replace it. They do not offer any other way to, to repair that quick disconnect. So we're going to replace that with the factory unit. And this here is the actual jug that has the power steering fluid in it. These cars use a Dextron 3 for their power steering. And you just simply spin this off. And it's got a dipstick on the actual lid. You can see the stages there. So you can see where low and full is. So right there, you see those three notches. So this notch here, that's full low. This is full high. So you want to be in between that somewhere in this little section. So I've actually already lost a lot of fluid, of course, because I am leaking. I went ahead and pulled what I could out with some rags. But if you've got a siphon you can use, you can siphon that out and get as much as you can out. We're definitely going to be leaking some out when we take all this loose, so it is going to be a little messy. We are going to have to clean the engine bay uh, shortly after to get all that out. So here's where the leak is. That's a quick connect on a pipe that leads into a coupling to a rubber pipe. That heads all the way, kind of twists around, passes through this bulkhead area where the radiator condenser is. And then it comes out and in the front. You can see right there the one with the white tag on it. That runs over to the actual cooler. You can kind of see that little spiny looking thing. That is actually the power steering cooler. It runs across the entire front of the car. And then you've got another piece that hooks on to another rubber pipe that heads on the other side of the car through that passage beside the radiator and the condenser. And all the way back up, which you're probably not going to be able to see here, but we are directly below where the reservoir is at that I was pointing out earlier. So that hooks right into the bottom of the reservoir. So this cooler pipe simply is just snapped in place. You can see that little snap right there, kind of where my hook is pointing. That's the snap that holds it in place. And then you've got another one. It's a little better visible right there. And that holds that cooler in place. We're going to pop that cooler out. Unsnap this side because it's already a mess. And see what oil we can get to come out. Before we start taking loose the other side. To try to keep the other side cleaner. Uh, less work to get it all cleaned out. But we do want to get all this oil cleaned out once we get this replaced. As you see, it's been kind of going across some of my bushings here, there, and the sway bar bushing as well is a little wet. So we want to try to get those cleaned up and dried off as best as possible. Here's the part number that we'll be using today. It's a genuine Jaguar part. It's MJA8084AB. It's this one right here. So that's going to be the one that you're going to want. And here it is outside the car, the new one. I said you got this kind of spiny section here. This is all to help radiate heat off of the fluid. And we've got the pipe here. This is going to go up to our reservoir. And then we've got this pipe here that has the quick connect on it. And you see it's got rubber seals down in there. Kind of see those green pieces. Those are actual O-rings that are down in there. You might be able to pull the old ones out and try to find ones that fit, but it looked like it might even be leaking where it has actually been crimped. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. The part wasn't too terrible a price. I want to say I found it for about $140, $150. Uh, it's kind of pricey, but like I said, I'm concerned about that. And uh, I've got quite a bit of rust going on here. And here on mine, not to mention the cooler is actually 
pretty crushed in a few places. So I think this car is, well, I'm sure this car has been in a wreck at least once in its life. So we're going to see if we can make that a little better. The spot I want to show you here, that way you can see it up close because you're not going to get to see it so much in the car. You can see it's got four tangs in there. Kind of hard to see, but there's one, two, three, four. So each one of those is pushed inwards. So as they go past a flange on the pipe, that locks it in, keeps it from uh, letting go. So you have to have a special tool typically to get these out. But because we have a new part, I don't have to really worry about it too much. I can actually just get in here with the screwdriver, pry these back, and even break them if I want to. Because I'm not going to be reusing it. I'm going to be throwing it away. When you actually have a new part, it makes this job a lot easier. But if you're going to be pulling this off to do some repairs or whatever, uh, you do want to be careful with that. Do go buy you some quick connect releases. Uh, they sell them in a lot of different stores. They're not terribly expensive. And uh, that'll make this job a lot easier than trying to wedge a screwdriver in there and slowly pry it off. Here's an example of some of the quick release tools I was talking about. This is a simple set that you can pick up for really, really cheap. It just has a gap on one side, as you can see here. Got a gap. That way you can spread this apart, get it around the hose. And then this piece here, the nippled end, that's the side you're going to shove down into the tube, like so. And that will push the, the actual retainers out and allow you to slide the pipe off. So cheap little tool comes in real handy. They make other designs that actually have a kind of a scissor action to them like this. And what they'll do is they'll put a, a rubber band on those sometimes in the middle so when you pull it apart it'll go around the tube. It'll have a you know a little bit of a handle on it because of that. And it'll hold closed just like this does around the pipe. But that little handle gives you a little leverage to uh, push against that if you're having trouble getting those pushed in. These here, of course, it's just simply get it around there and then push it down with your hand. As you pull the pipe loose, this will slide out with it. Started taking the cooler off. I got the passenger side off with the quick connects. But now I'm over on the driver's side. And what we got is two hoses on here, one to the pump and then one through the cooler and then it comes back around to the other side of the pump. So you've got a smaller line here. That's the lower line. That's the actual cooler line coming back up here. It's got a quick release clamp. As you can see there on the top one, it's got one just like that on the bottom one. And I use a special tool to get that off because it is in a very tight area. I don't know if you have one, but if you do, great. If you don't, I would suggest getting one if you plan on doing this kind of stuff. These come in very handy for really tight uh, areas. This here is an actual clamp. It's got multiple teeth on it for different occasions. It's a universal tool. And it's on a cable. And then a lock here. So it works very similar to like a wood clamp, except for having the cable and the metal clamp on the end. As you pump this here, this trigger, squeeze that. Your clamp closes. And it's got a retainer here that locks it. So once you have that clamp, it's going to hold that clamp open so that you can slide it off. And when you're ready to release it, you just push this. Of course, it releases and it opens up down here. Real quick and easy. So that makes it easy to get down into to areas that are a lot tougher to get into with a pair of pliers or whatever it may be. Now that we've got this loose and I've got that clamp slid back, and hopefully y'all can see that. I'm going to have to take a pair of pliers and just kind of work that loose. But I went ahead and took the bracket off as well that holds this jug in place. As you can see, it's just flopping around. And that bracket, right here, it mounts onto the car. If you were to look at it from the same angle we're looking at the, the tank from, it mounts just like this. And you've got these two rubber grommets here with steel pins in the middle of them. 
that slide over some studs that are on the ABS module. So on this front side here, you kind of see down there, got a stud right here. I don't know if you can see that. And there's one just a little lower than it. So those two studs actually hold it on, and then you've got two flange nuts that hold those in place. Just a couple newton meters there to hold that on. Nothing uh, crazy tight. And same thing for the uh, reservoir clamp. Once you get it in place, there's a long bolt that squeezes this around the reservoir. Now we've got the hose off the jug. It's got this kind of bend in it here. We can pass it through this passage. So we're going to push it through. And it's actually already loose on the other side. But it just passes through this kind of foam buffer here out towards the front of the car. So it's really loose now. Try not to tear that buffer up. You can see the hose here coming out right here. It's actually catching on the hood support. You just got to pull that. There you go. There's the old one. As I said, you got, got quite a bit of rust going on here. It's part of the reason we're going ahead and replacing it. It's going to fail in the not too far future. As you see, we have, from being in the car for so long, it has kind of changed its shape a little bit. But that kink is there to be twisted back into the jug. Because the jug actually has the nipple that comes off the side of the jug, not the very bottom where it just shoots straight down. So it does kind of shoot out from the jug at a 90. And here you are on the other end. You can see when I started prying on it, I had a feeling it was probably going to break anyhow. Sure enough, they broke off with little to no trouble. That plastic was pretty old and worn out. The leak was actually showing to be possibly even further up on this here. You can see all the, the fluid. Because this actually points down, but yet there's fluid in here when I squeeze it. So it could be even leaking at this clamp onto the rubber hose. And then once again, more corrosion. And as you see, our cooler is not the greatest of shape anymore so it's not going to be giving you the proper cooling that it should not that I could see that that would be a huge problem unless you're doing some uh, kind of aggressive driving where you're constantly turning you know going through the bins and everything so that might actually cause an issue there but here we don't have a whole lot of that and I don't plan on doing any kind of a track on this car so we're gonna be running this new one in now this is the office side, this is the passenger side. We're going to be going through, right through here with our tube and coming out on the other side over here, kind of back behind the AC pipes to join back in with the pipe back there. So we're going to hook onto that pipe. Like I said, it's got like a little flange on it. That's where that other pipe will snap past it and lock it in. We'll go back in behind all that and come out over the top. You can see right there on the frame there's a C clamp right there. And that's what we're going to snap into. Here we are on the driver's side. I've already got the tube pushed through. So that rubber pipe is passing through right next to the radiator and condenser. Here's the passenger side that has a quick connect. It's once again passing through right beside the radiator and past that, that rubber foam there. And over here on this side, we've come around, like I said, back behind the cooling system. And you got some pads there to help keep that hose off the cooling system. It's built onto the hose itself. And then we've snapped back down on that steel pipe. I'll have to wipe that off a little bit more to get all that residual oil off. We got the pipe on. To get that pipe on, because it's brand new of course, the rubber is going to be real grippy. So I took a little bit of the old oil, got just a touch of it on my finger, and rubbed it around the nipple that it was going to slide onto. That helped that tube slide on a lot easier than trying to uh, push it on without any lubrication. Got that on. I went ahead and left it loose like this and put the clamp on 
of course put it on before I put the tube onto the res uh, reservoir but to slide it back up I just did it right here by having this loose so for people that don't have that tool I showed you earlier uh, that may be another option for you is go ahead and take that bracket off like I mentioned before get this up out of the way like this then you can get to those clamps a lot easier rather than having to have the special tool so there are workarounds for those kind of things and of course it's usually take more stuff off uh, if it's possible and that'll enable you not to have some of those little special tools like that I wanted to point this out right here we've got the clamp has the two bolts that holds it on with the two metal spacers that holds the jug in place but if you look way down there you'll see a rubber grommet with a metal in it so it actually has a tooth there that'll actually go around that so when you're getting that back in place be sure and catch on there before you run your bolts down to hold this in place otherwise it might stand you out a little bit at an awkward angle we got the pipes on so we're going down to get the cooler in place so this is before we put it back up in there you can see the hoses are all kind of bent around a little bit they should give you enough play to get that back up in place so you just kind of have to work it around just be careful not to bend the coils on your cooler and trying to get it up in there so there we are all back in place snapped into the clip you can see there a little clip right in front of the coupling and then back over here snap onto the clip like I said you just simply have to bend it around the hoses will give you plenty of play to kind of move around just make sure you uh, check your hoses when you're done to make sure they're in place and not rubbing on something they shouldn't rub on so there we go connected back off in here as it should be wiped it all off get all the residue off as I mentioned in pretty much all my videos, you've got this stuff loose. It's a good time to clean up anything you need to clean up. Everything's back in place. So we just need to, uh, of course, refill the power steering system and do a bleed on that. And I'm going to have a separate video for that, so look out for that to finish up this job.